hello everyone. Uh, before jumping into my slides, I would like to know uh, from the audience how many of your companies, or your, uh, if you're coming from the public sector, uh, how many of you uh, do work with startups on your daily business? Could you raise hands? Okay, nice. Uh, and uh, how many of you uh, have got uh, venture capital funds or uh, acceleration programs within your companies to make sure that you're able to capture the innovation coming from the entrepreneurial uh, sector? So, no hands uh, on stage. Okay, uh, I'm Agustin Moro, I work at Telefonica, and I would like to share with you uh, how do corporates uh, work with startups and uh, share the journey that Telefonica has done uh, up to today uh, regarding innovators. Uh, I know very little about water, but I do have learned a lot in the past years on, on, on how uh, corporations can capture, uh, can capture this value coming from startups. At Telefonica, basically what we do is uh, scaling startups. Uh, I would like to start with something that might be pretty obvious to everyone, uh, but I think it's important to highlight. Uh, companies should be always under perpetual reinvention. So companies that not uh, innovate will not survive in the, in the current uh, digital environment. Um, we can have a quick look at the Fortune 500 index and you can see there that uh, in 50 years uh, or in 60 years, the average age of, of companies uh, has come down from 60 years to just 25 years of life. Uh, I think this might bring us uh, an idea of how uh, companies need to, to, to innovate in order to, to keep on, uh, on those index and keep on being relevant on, on each of the industries. So from the top 10 companies in the world by market cap in 2017, you can see that six of them are coming from the digital environment. Uh, and all of them are super young companies. Maybe uh, Microsoft is the oldest one there, but, but uh, the rest of the six are, are almost newborn. Um, so disruption uh, comes to, to, to every industry uh, sooner or, or later, but uh, uh, on, the telco, on the telco side, uh, this happened in, 2000, in the early 2000s, so this is something that uh, uh, we have reinvented ourselves. It's, it, it was not an option, it, it's a matter of need. So you, you, you need to, 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 to change your approach, you, you need to change the, the, the cultural mindset of, of the company in order to survive. Um, an example of this might be the automotive industry, uh, which has been disrupted in so many fields and in so many layers. Uh, and that was something that maybe the European hard industry uh, players uh, weren't ex expecting. Um, Peter Thiel, who's the, who as you might know, he's the founder of PayPal, uh, I think gives a, a good insight on what happened. So we were thinking of uh, flying cars, a lot of innovation coming and new technologies, but in the past 15 years, I guess pretty, um, most of the digital industry has been focused on, on, on social networks. So uh, corporates usually don't know where disruption might be coming from. Um, what we have learned here is that there is not shor no, no shortcut in, in, in the innovation journey. Uh, it's a path that you have to walk uh, every day um, and you cannot just uh, skip it. Uh, it's a learning by doing process and it's important to uh, start as soon as possible. Um, I think corporates, uh, since we do not know where disruption is coming from, what we should be doing is uh, kissing a lot of frogs until we find our proper prints and the proper player that uh, might complement our business model or, or our industry and try to establish win-win situations in which uh, both parties might grow together. So, um, for us, it's like being an elephant that has to, to dance with gazelles. Uh, we corporates are uh, huge uh, dinosaurs or huge animals that usually speak different language to entrepreneurs and uh, different language to startups. So, we do not know how to interact with them. And it's like uh, if you are in the dancing floor, uh, we should be agile and learn to, to, to dance with, with, uh, with the smaller players. And, 
this is what I, mean, what I was saying, it's an iterative process uh, through which you have to walk each step in order to learn and to, to make this cultural shift within your organization. I think the, the time is now, and this is the, the good news. Uh, we're living a super exciting moment right now with uh, uh, artificial intelligence solutions that have already built uh, and clear use cases within uh, corporates and within enterprises. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of millions of devices that are being connected uh, through, the, through IT. We have decentralized networks uh, that uh, are entailing low latency services uh, as opposite as, 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 as the ones that were being provided by, by former, by former uh, connectivities and networks. So we think this is the beginning of an era that uh, will really, really change the way, will really change the, the, the battlefield or the play field. Um, so it's the time to learn quicker, it's a time to learn more, and the way in which corporates can do this better, and corporates and also public agents, it's by looking into startups. I cannot think of a more agile agent or player in the market that, than startups that have limited resources and need to uh, pivot and struggle in order to allocate those resources in the proper, uh, in the proper piece of the business in order to prosper and to, and, to, and to grow bigger. So our vision uh, from the telco side uh, and specifically from Telefonica side is uh, we're trying to be the most global, the most connected and the most tech driven uh, open innovation hub in the world. Uh, we have different innovation programs and different innovation initiatives uh, in each of the countries in which Telefonica operate. And uh, we have built a set of tools that can support uh, startups and that can support innovators regardless of the maturity stage. Um, so, sorry. It's not working properly. At the very center of this ecosystem that we are trying to build is always <coughs> Telefonica and our business units and our global strategic units. Why? Because we need to bring value to our core business and to make sure that we're not doing just open innovation to support startups or, or to, or to uh, come close, uh, closer to innovators, but we really want to make business with them, as, as, as I previously said. So. Um, we have launched uh, all this set of tools in, 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 in all the countries and in those countries in which we are not present but we think that there are important innovation hubs to the telco industry, we want to be present through partners. And we think that the only way to, uh, to reinvent yourself is through a collaborative model, looking uh, into what other industries and into what other players are doing. And that's why, since IT is a very transversal layer to any type of business, uh, everyone uses nowadays uh, uh, information and technology uh, capacities, uh, we can do joint innovation with all those players. And that's uh, our vision, and that's uh, what we're doing. We do that with corporates, uh, as you can see in the slide. We do that also with, uh, with uh, public agents. We do it with financial partners, like the, the ones that uh, were sitting in the, in the previous session. And for sure, uh, in this different or in this cross-industry approach, a smart city is uh, a solid bet for Telefonica. It's not only about water management, but also about energy, about smart transportation, about uh, yeah, mobility, parking. We want to be there, and uh, we want to be if there's uh, in the next big thing within these different sectors. <coughs> So we started doing, uh, doing uh, open innovation and investing in startups in, in, in back in 2006 and throughout all these years we have invested in, in more than 400 startups. Uh, we have invested uh, more than 160 million and together with our partners uh, around 1.2 billion. Uh, I'm proud to say that uh, as of today my company is working with more than 120 startups and this is, has been a, a learning process. At the beginning we invested in things that didn't bring value to, to, to our business, so it has been a matter of, tri of trial and error and doing things differently. 
why do an entrepreneur uh, might want to, 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 to work and to partner with a big corporation? I think big corporations, uh, if, we, if we play it smart, we can bring them unique assets that they do not have. Uh, we can do joint business development and open our uh, client base and all our infrastructure to those startups. We can put a skin in the game, meaning that we can put money and we can also bring uh, expertise and access to technology and to the know-how that big corporates might have. We can bring also, we have uh, uh, acceleration spaces and innovation hubs in which uh, those companies might be working and might be interacting with, with corporations and uh, we do asset this uh, by leveraging third parties. So it's not just a matter of the value that Telefonica can bring to them, but also the rest of our partners and the rest of collaborators that we have among our network. So what we basically do is five type of simultaneously plays is uh, trying to find best innovators and best disruptors and match them with Telefonica's needs and with our corporate needs. We want to focus on mature startups that are ready to work with corporations from the very beginning because if those, that such a startup is still too small or still too embryonary, they might not uh, have already like a proven business case or a proven business model. And then uh, the value that we can bring to them is very little. So we need them to have already established business and something that's going, that's proven and, uh, uh, and that might be working with a, a, a not agile agent as we are uh, from the very beginning. We know that corporations were like the ugly guy in the disco, so we have to put more things and more assets on the table than just pure financial investors, that the ones that, that, that were sitting before. In which uh, fields uh, do telco industries investing right now? In, 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 I guess most of you might, might think of them quite easily, but it's IoT and here uh, it's a clear, uh, a clear common field of interest with the water sector. In video and AR, in advanced data analytics, we do business uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, cybersecurity. All these sectors and all these niches might be relevant to the telco industry, to the water industry. We also want to bet for future technologies like blockchain and edge. So as said before, yeah, we focus on scaling them up and on top of the money, the best value we can bring them is business, joint business with Telefonica and that's where we focus, that's our differential. Um, and then the, the for doing this on a massive way, what we're trying to do is open the, the capacities to, to, to the innovators world and open our APIs uh, and our platforms to developers and to entrepreneurs so that they can directly access our customer base and our, and our infrastructure. And finally, as said before and throughout the whole presentation, we're doing this uh, under a collaborative model. So that's basically what we do. I think uh, there's not an exact formula for any corporation to, to, to to interact with entrepreneurs, there are different tools, but what it's clear to me is that for sure, every corporation has to collaborate with startups. Innovation is not coming just from the instant, from the traditional R&D units, but it's coming also from the innovators world, uh, which is the startups and entrepreneurs. Thank you very much.